Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name is Jason Newland and this is Let Me Bore You to Sleep. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. Yeah. So, um, just thought I'd read you out a nice little message I got. It is from, uh, oh, there it is. I put it into my re- my review section. It was uh, like a message sent from a website. Uh, it says, uh, it's from Vicky. I've, Hi, Jason. I've been listening to your Spotify I listened to a little bit. Hi, Jason. I've been listening to you on Spotify since I had a stroke in July 2019, age 34, which has left me partially sighted with severe anxiety and depression. And I find your podcast really helpful. So, thank you, Vicky. Chances are. Vicky might not be listening to this podcast because it possibly it's the well it might be the the relaxation for stress and anxiety and panic attacks podcast that Vicky's listening to but there's no way of knowing if that's the case um I just put three and three together and added it up you know kind of uh figured that might be the case but uh, but some people listen to more than just one of my podcasts uh, so yeah so it's really lovely thank you so today is uh, officially I suppose as you listen to this it's Monday the 27th of whatever day it is January so Hello and welcome to this day. I've done very little the last day. Um, I was watching boxing last night or the night before, you know, because I sleep during the day. So uh, before I went to sleep, I was watching, I made a recording, the Let Me Boy to Sleep recording during the last uh, fight I was watching because the audio was off so I just was like not matched with the actual boxing itself and then in the last round the whole thing just cut out so I didn't get to see what happened but I got to see who won because I managed to get it back so it was a bit rubbish really same thing happened with the previous fight as well so it was uh not the best way to watch it really but um, that's okay so um, So I'm just having a look I thought what I'd do today before I say anything else do you know I've just watched on telly it was one of these um, programs about the railway. Now, I don't know if you've ever seen any of these programs. They're, they'll show like a, a railway station in operation and they'll show the staff, interview the staff. And it's kind of like a, a real, reality program, really. And it's done the same with cruise ships. They've done the same with you know, TV has done the same with uh, airports and they've done the same with you know uh, like digging digging tunnels uh, that, you know sort of through the channel and those kinds of things they've done those or those kind of reality programs for that what other ones have done the same for building like big structures, big buildings and they've got another one that's they've got one which is called um, I forget what it is but 
it follows people going into houses and clearing up the hoarders, like the hoard, like the hoard, hoarding houses. I don't know, you know where people hoard lots of stuff and they go in and clear it all out. I know they've got that in America as well. Um, they have it here. They have reality shows following people clearing drains. Can you believe it? That she, <laughs> it's just like what? And then I have other programs focusing on shops, like Harrods, or other other reality programs focusing on factories. There's so many of them. It's I didn't realise how many of them what there was until I started listing them. I mean, there used to be a really popular one uh, about the airport. I forget which, well it was more, it wasn't so much about the airport other than the airline in the airport and I think it was one of those cheap airlines, the ones where people pay for really cheap tickets and then complain that they don't get a good service and yeah that one, it's weird that isn't it? Personally, if I could afford it and I was going to fly somewhere, I'd get the most expensive ticket I could. I want to make sure I get there safe. Oh, can you imagine the pilot? It's probably not true, but I just imagine the pilot on one of those cheap flights, you know, just being an agency worker, getting paid minimum wage, sitting there thinking, oh, I don't care about this. Oh, we'll get there, I suppose. Might as well take off now. Did I check the fuel? Oh, I don't know. I'm sure someone must have done. I don't get paid enough. It's above my pay grade. <laughs> and then, then I think, you know when people leave their jobs and they give a month's notice? And I've only ever done that once, I think, where I've actually given a month's notice and I've worked the whole month very very strange experience because I found myself becoming less and less interested in the job I cared less and less the closer I got to leaving for good and I didn't even try I wasn't intending to be like that I just started to notice that it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't matter what I do right now. It's not going to make any difference to me. However, I did have a position where it made a difference to other people. So you know, I made sure that I did things correctly. But at the same time, I was letting people off because I was listening to calls, and I was being a probably a bit more gentle with what I was doing. Not hugely, but just a bit more. I had to force myself to do the job properly. This is years ago. This is back in 90... What, 2007? And... It was just really weird. Like I, think I, I started thinking, you know what? If this is what it's like for me. And I'm doing a job which is really unresponsible. You know, there's no... Uh, there's not really any responsibility in what I was doing as far as affecting people's lives in any huge way. Imagine someone who's a doctor or a surgeon or a paramedic or a policeman, woman or a, a, pl yeah, a pilot Can you imagine someone in the middle of an operation saying, up, oh, just like dropping his tools and just starting to put, take his jacket off and say, and the same saying, what are you doing? I said, no, no, it's, it's fine, I've, I've finished now. What do you mean you've finished? Yeah, I've finished this, I gave him a month's notice to, that's it, it's six o'clock and that's the end of my, me working here. 
Yeah, but it's an open heart surgery you do it. it. Don't matter, I'm finished. I've done. I've given my month's notice. I'm not doing overtime, am I? I mean, not on me. I did loads of overtime before, but now I don't. <laughs> See ya. I mean, I just obviously, I'm sure that has never happened ever. And you know, someone that's surgeon, there's there's a much, you know, they're, I'm sure they're they're brilliant in every way. But just just that idea, of like you know, <laughs> in the middle of an operation, like oh. Okay. Bye. Or maybe someone in a the pilot jumping out with a parachute. Ah, my shift's over. I've got to get back to my other job now. Ah. Yeah. So I was thinking about that. So, but don't worry. I'm not going to go any further into that because it was. That was even boring for me. Oh, I'm tired today. <sighs> I say today, you know, because it's still today for me. It's today for me until probably six o'clock in the morning. It's just. I had a really, really lazy day. And there's something I've been wanting to do for a while. Is the Deep Sleep Whisper Hypnosis podcast. I've been neglecting that a little bit. In the sense of not making any new recordings for you know a little while. Yeah, I managed to make a new one every day pretty much for this this one. I mean, it's 27th of, this, of January now. And this is my 26th recording of the year for this podcast. So I've only missed one day so far out of the whole month. Which is, I think it's a first for me. I don't think I've ever done that many in one month before for one podcast and I've done quite a few for the relaxation for stress and anxiety as well I've even got, start to get regular with the sleep hypnosis weekly podcast but that's just once a week so that's fairly should be fairly easy to do but the deep sleep whisper for some reason well, there is a reason. The reason for it is finding somewhere quiet. Because when you're whispering, you almost need there to be no background sound at all. Because everything else is it's more noticeable, I, from, to me anyway. It, it distracts me when I'm doing the recording. Um, so what I've decided is what I don't normally do sometimes I do it with the deep sleep whisper is I'm going to put together some ideas of recordings I'm going to make so I sat here for about an hour and I put together ideas for eight new recordings for the Deep Sleep Whisper and what I'm going to do in the next six hours I'm going to record I might actually record a week's worth I can do three an hour it's, uh, it's 20, about 20 minutes each so I can do I could do two an hour really and then have a break and then do another two so I could two, four, six so yeah so I could definitely do a week's worth tonight or you know this morning and then just upload them as, as the day comes 
So record them when I can find a quiet space and then record a few, which isn't how I normally do things, not really how I, I like to do things. I like it to be more organic and more, just so it feels more natural, you know? Which is why I generally record these recordings to let me bore you to sleep the day that I release them. Occasionally I'll do it the day before, like in the evening. So maybe I might make a recording at 10 in the evening and then release it, you know, sort of midnight. Because maybe, maybe there's nothing on telly or I just fancy doing it. But the, I don't know, just, I suppose, I don't have a really, really quiet place. It's, I mean, it's not noisy in here. I mean, I've got soundproofing on the walls. I've got my shed, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna sit in the shed but it's a bit, it's no, there's a, a little light in there, which, you know, you couldn't, you couldn't even, I can't even see my feet with the light on. And you may say, Jason, that's your belly getting in the way. Stop it. I'm just saying, it's, the light doesn't shine enough to even shine and light up the floor. So there's a bit of work needing doing on that, uh, in that shed. But once it's done, it'll be nice. I'll get, once I've soundproofed it, outside and inside, and then I'll add, I'll get some lights, invest in some like really nice, decent lights that are bright enough for me to feel comfortable in there, and not feel like I'm sitting in a shed in a bedroom which is at the moment what I'm doing. And then it will feel relaxed. And I can just sit on the chair, stretch out and just do my recording. And it'll be groovy. Yeah. So that's uh that's what I'm planning for that. But it's, We'll see, we'll see. Just, I mean, what I'm intending to do is I've got these strips of soundproofing on the left side of me, on the left wall, and they're self-adhesive on the back. They've got, a, they come where you just peel off at the strip at the back and it's it's really sticky, proper pretty much stick to anything and uh, it could, honestly it's so it could stick to a, to a snail's bum it's that sticky seriously even things that it wouldn't I don't know why I said that but it's just basically it would stick to pretty much anything and quite long so my aim over the next few months is to get as many of them as I can and start applying them inside to the point where everything is covered including the floor the wall ceiling everything and then maybe even add another layer on top so that the whole place is completely soundproofed and then add outside as well, so that nothing, yeah, so there's, that will double soundproof it. So I put it on outside of the shed, so nothing that I say will get out, nothing that I, anything will get in. So it'll just make it much, much, well hopefully it'll be really good, and it'll be clear, and the thing is it's not very big, So it's okay for like a short recording, but 
I don't think I particularly want to spend too much time in there, you know, doing recordings. I quite like being able to sit here. I've got the telly on, but it's on mute. Um, you know, I've got my laptop over there if I need to get to it. I've got a drink. I've got my tablet. You know, all that stuff that I've got access to and Andre running around. But I don't, I won't have any of that when I'm in that, in that shed. I can take a tablet in there, of course. But there's not enough room to have the laptop and... So yeah, I'll see. I mean, part of me wanted to get rid, of, get rid of the whole thing, but that would just be ridiculous. Oh, just looking at this website. And it's got this bar, uh, you know, where you can share stuff, like to Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, but it's basically in the way of the whole page. It just, oh, so annoying. Okay. So let's have a look, if I go in, Google wants to use my microphone. So allow Google to use my microphone. Uh, allow. That's what I'm going to do. Oh, waiting. So I'm going to Google funny jokes. So let's see what comes up. Funny jokes. Funny jokes. <laughs> Funny jokes. Nothing's coming up. Oh dear. So I want to put funny jokes, but I don't want to say anything that's going to upset the world. Funny quotes. That's it. That'd be a good one. So this is keepinspiringme.me. Dot me cool funny quotes 300 funny jokes that make you laugh out loud so I thought let's have a let's have a little read so I thought I'd do this just as a bit of light relief just for you know read out a few of these for you and for me really just a Give me something to look at as well. Right, so this is the website's called Keep Inspiring.me. So these are 300 funny quotes to make you laugh out loud. Before you judge a man, walk a mile in his shoes. After that, who cares? He's a mile away and you've got his shoes. That's from Billy Connolly. Okay, this is A.A. A. Milne. People say nothing is impossible, but I do nothing every day. Ah. So this is Abraham Lincoln. Better to remain silent and be thought a fool than to speak out and remove all doubt. Another one from him. If I were two-faced, would I be wearing this one? That's a good line. If I were two-faced, would I be wearing this one? The best thing about the future is that it comes one day at a time. Again, at Mr. Abe Lincoln. 
The only mystery in life is why the chimpanzees pilots wore help. No, I'll read that again. The only mystery in life is why the kamikaze pilots wore helmets. That's Al Magaya. Chimpanzee. I should be able to read by now, shouldn't I? Light travels faster than sound. This is why some people appear bright until you hear them speak. <laughs> As Alan Dunn's. Nobody realises that some people expend tremendous energy merely to be normal. That's true, Albert Camus. That's a truism. That's... So this one. Men marry women with the hope they will never change. Women marry men with the hope they will change. Invariably, they are both disappointed. Albert Einstein. See, none of this is my words. This is other people's words. So if you've got a problem, go and speak to Albert. <laughs> the difference between stupidity and genius is that genius has its limits. That's Mr. Einstein again. All the things I really like to do are either immoral, illegal or fattening. It's Alexander Walcott. I won't read the next ones. That's some people might get upset with that. It would be nice to spend billions on schools and roads, but right now that money is desperately needed for political ads. <laughs> Andy Burowitz. The average dog is nicer person is a nicer person than the average person. Andy Rooney. Oh. Every party there are two kinds of people. Those who want to go home and those who don't. The trouble is, they're usually married to each other. Anne Landers. Another one by Anne Landers. If you want your children to listen, try talking softly to someone else. <laughs> I was going to talk about this. I saw in this program a guide. You know, you get the guide dogs. This was a guide horse. I kid you not. Seriously, a guide horse to travel on the trains, the underground trains in London. guide horse now it wasn't a big horse it was I suppose a miniature I don't know a miniature horse or something but it was still big you know it's a horse it's still a hell of a lot bigger than any any dog you'll well most dogs you'll ever see whose idea was that a horse on a tube train which is full packed with people. I mean, a dog would struggle to get on, but a horse, I don't know, it just seemed strange. And what was weird about it is they put this um, bag on its bum to catch the dung but it didn't work so it, uh, it basically let rip all over the floor <laughs> which is funny anyway doctors are just the same as lawyers the only difference is that lawyers merely rob you whereas doctors rob you and kill you too <laughs> what <laughs> a 
that's Anton Chekhov. Blimey. Arthur C. Clarke says, I don't believe in astrology. I'm a Sagittarius and we're sceptical. My opinions have changed, but not the fact that I'm right. Ashley Brilliant. To be sure of hitting the target, shoot first and call wherever you hit the target. Ashley Brilliant. Trouble knocked at the door, but hearing laughter hurried away. Benjamin Benjamin Franklin. Mr. Franklin. Here's something about Benjamin Franklin you might not know. He is one of the most famous Americans in history. But he was on the board um, of basically deciding whether or not hypnosis was real or not. Seriously. And he concluded that, well actually it might have been mesmerism, but he decided that it wasn't. He decided it was, I suppose, suggestion. Which is what hypnotist, that's what it's, that's what it is anyway, but yeah, he wasn't, I think he was a big fan. But a lot of people aren't a big fan of things I don't understand, are they? Have you noticed that all the people in favour of childbirth are already born? (laughs) That's Benny Hill. Oh dear. (laughs) It's <laughs> the most absurd thing ever. It's the same. You could you could tip it over the other way, and it's still the same. Ah oh dear. Be who you are and say. <laughs> That's tickled me. I don't know why. <sighs> Be who you are and say what you feel. Because those who don't no, be who you are and say what you <laughs> be who you are okay, be who you are and say what you feel. Because those who mind don't matter and those who matter don't mind. Bernard Brooch Most people would would sooner die than think. In fact, they do so. That's again Bertrand Russell. The world is full of magical patients. No, the world. I should learn to read before I do this. The world is full of magical things, patiently waiting for our wits to grow sharper. Bertrand Russell. I'm calling him Bernard. Facebook just sounds like a drag. In my day, seeing pictures of people's vaccinations was considered a punishment. Betty White. Everything that used to be a sin is now a disease. Bill Mayer. If there is anything the nonconformist hates worse than a conformist, It's another non-conformist who doesn't conform to the prevailing standard of non-conformity. Bill Vaughan. Okay, money won't buy happiness, but it will pay the salaries of a large research staff to study the problem. Bill Vaughan. The surest sign the intelligent life exists elsewhere in the universe is that it has never tried to contact us. Bill Waterson. Okay, right, so... I've 
I've always wanted to go to Switzerland to see what the army does with those wee red knives. Billy Connolly. Going to church doesn't make you a Christian any more than going to a garage makes you an automobile. Billy Sunday. Oh, this is Billy Wilder. If you're going to tell people the truth, be funny or they'll kill you. <laughs> and this next one's from Bob Hope. A bank is a place that will lend you money if you can prove that you don't need it. Yeah, that's, that's a good, good line there. Inside me, there's a thin person struggling to get out. But I can usually sedate him with four or five cupcakes. <laughs> Bob Tapes. We never really grow up. We only learn how to act in public. Yeah, I kind of agree with that. Brian White. As a child, my family's menu consisted of two choices. Take it or leave it. That's Buddy Hackett. That's pretty much the same when I was a kid. Um, but the fact that some geniuses were laughed at does not imply that all who are laughed at are geniuses. They laughed at Columbus. They laughed at Fulton. They laughed at the Wright brothers. But they also laughed at Bonzo the Clown. Or Bozo the Clown. That's Card Sagan. Yeah, it wasn't that funny really, was it? My favourite machine at the gym is the vending machine. Caroline Rear. <laughs> All right, everyone. Line up alphabetically according to your height. That's Casey Stengel. This is from Charles D. Gould. He who laughs last didn't get the joke. This is Charles Lamb. I always arrive late at the office, but I make up for it by leaving early. <laughs> Don't worry about the world coming to an end today. It's already tomorrow in Australia. True. Charles M. Schultz. Is that the one who did Peanuts? The Peanuts uh, character. By the time a man realises that his father was right, he has a son who thinks he's wrong. That's Charles Wadsworth. Charlie Chaplin says, A day without laughter is a day wasted. Good old Charlie. Not sure about your moustache though. That was uh, isn't quite as popular as it once was. Political correctness is tyranny with manners. Sean Heston. <sighs> Fair enough. I wouldn't want to argue with him because he might shoot me. High heels were invented by a woman who had been kissed on the forehead. Christopher Morley. If you love something, set it free. But don't be surprised if it comes back with herpes. Chuck Palahniuk. Okay. Uh, this is from Clarence Darrow. When I was a boy, I was told that anybody could become president. I'm beginning to believe it. Ooh. Claude Pepper. A stock, bro a stock broker urged me to buy a stock that would triple its value every year. I told him, at my age, I don't even buy green bananas. <laughs> 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 that 
They say marriages are made in heaven, but so is thunder and lightning. That's Clint Eastwood. Did you hear that? Andre's moaning. I wonder what he's dreaming. I wonder what he dreams about. Colonel Sanders, this is, it says, I'm too drunk to taste this chicken. <laughs> I can't imagine that's true, that he said that. But A study in the Washington Post says that women have better verbal skills than men. I just want to say to the authors of that book, Duh, Conan O'Brien. Or Duh, Duh, Duh. It's another one from Conan. Starbucks says they are going to start putting religious quotes on cups. The very first one will say, Jesus, this cup is expensive. Uh, Cullen Hightower. Laughing at our mistakes can lengthen our life. Laughing at someone else's can shorten it. Mm. This is from Cynthia Heimel. If you can't live without me, why aren't you dead already? <laughs> uh, and this one is, if you think you are too small to make a difference, try sleeping with a mosquito. Dalai Lama. It's true. They Mosquitoes definitely make a difference and they're tiny, aren't they? Remember today is to... Actually, probably when he says sleeping with a, a mosquito, probably like getting stung by a mosquito when you're asleep. I thought it was talking about making love to one. Okay. It was a Dalai Lama after all, so it probably is not talking about the, uh, the latter. Where does my mind go? My darling, when I'm alone in my bed... Remember, today is tomorrow. Uh, today, remember, remember. Today is the tomorrow you worried about yesterday. Yeah, Dale Carnegie. It's true, isn't it? Education is learning what you didn't even know you didn't know. Daniel J. Bursting. And this is from Dave Barry. Dave Barry, it is a scientific fact that your body will not absorb cholesterol if you take it from another person's plate. <laughs> it must be a fact. Also, another one from Dave Barry. Never under any circumstances take a sleeping pill and a laxative on the same night. And this is from Daily Roth. I used to jog, but the ice cubes kept falling out of my glass. This is from David Letterman. Everyone has a purpose in life. Perhaps... <laughs> I just imagine him saying this. Everyone has a purpose in life. Perhaps yours is watching television. That was a bit of a put down to his audience, wasn't it? This is Dimitri Martin. The digital camera is a great invention because it allows us to reminisce instantly. <laughs> a failure is like fertilizer. It stinks to be sure, but it makes things grow faster in the future. Dennis Wheatley. Yeah. Dennis Wheatley, or Wheatley, he's a business person. Or was. Biologically speaking, if something bites you, it's more likely to be female. Desmond Morris. Or well, Desmond Morris is the expert, so I don't know if that's true or not. I wouldn't even... even pretend to oh as long as people will accept crap 
it will be financially profitable to dispense it. <laughs> Dick Cavett. A pessimist is a person who has had to listen to too many optimists. <laughs> Don Marquis. This is from Dor Dorothy Parker. Wasn't she in The Wizard of Oz? The cure for boredom is curiosity. There is no cure for curiosity. This is Doug from Doug Larson. Never doubt the courage of the French. They were the ones who discovered that snails were edible. Yep. Um, another one from this is Douglas Adams you know the uh, universe um, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Universe human beings who are almost unique in having human beings who are almost unique in having the ability to learn from the experience of others are also remarkable for their apparent dis disclination to do so. Yeah, that's a mouthful. Another one from him. I refuse to answer that question on the grounds that I don't know the answer. <laughs> and one more from Douglas Adams. There is a theory which states that if ev ever... There is a much better with shorter sentences. There is a theory which states that if ever anyone discovers exactly what the universe is for and why it is here, it will instantly disappear and be replaced by something even more bizarre and inexplicable. There is another theory which states that it has already happened. Ah. Dr. Zeus says don't cry because it's over smile because it's happened Drake Dr. Drake King Drake says I was born to make mistakes not to fake perfection he's done pretty well though hasn't he At, uh, an alcoholic is someone you don't like who drinks as much as you do. What? Dylan Thomas. I don't get it. Analyzing humour is like dissecting a frog. Few people are interested and the frog dies of it. E.B. White. If you think nobody cares if you're alive, try missing a couple of car payments. <laughs> <laughs> Earl Wilson <laughs> try missing a couple of car payments that's a good one Yeah, try try missing paying your mortgage or paying your bills you start getting people calling calling at your door and phoning you up um, the duty of a patriot is to protect his country from its government that's Edward Abbey and this is Albert Hubbard do not take life too seriously. You'll never get out of it alive. And Elena, El Eleanor Roosevelt, was that was that Roosevelt's wife? Uh, a woman is like a tea bag. Again, this is not my words. This is what this person said. A woman is like a tea bag. You can't can't tell how strong she is until you put her into hot water. I suppose that could that could go for Ben as well. Could go for anyone, couldn't it? My grandmother started walking five miles a day when she was sixty. She's ninety-seven now, and we don't know where the hell she is. <laughs> so Ellen, just Ellen, just generous. <laughs> I like that. 
Oh dear. A computer once beat me at chess, but it was no match for me at kickboxing. <laughs> That's Emo Phillips. Another one from Emo. How many people here have telekinetic powers? Raise my hand. <laughs> Another one from Emo. I asked God for a bike, but I know God doesn't work that way. So I stole a bike and asked for forgiveness. Um, if you've ever seen Emo Phillips, you know that he's got a very, very specific delivery. <laughs> like, I asked God for a bike, but I know God doesn't work that way. So I stole a bike and asked for forgiveness. That's kind of emo, emo style. Um, okay, leave something for someone, but don't leave someone for something. Enid Blyton. Go away, Enid. <laughs> Never go to a doctor whose office plants have died. Irma Bombeck. Another one from her. Never have more children than you have car windows. Yes, it's a. Uh, 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 Miss Hemingway, I drink to make other people more interesting. That's tickled me as well. <laughs> oh dear! Great art is the concept. Is it that? Great art is the concept of a contempt of a great man for small art. I don't get that. That's F. Skull Scott Child. And friend Leboats is you're only as good as your last haircut. This is from Francois de la roche Um Good advice is something a man gives when he is too old to set a bad example. And marriage is the only war in which you sleep with the enemy. <laughs> ah. Fred Allen says I can't understand why a person will take a year to write a novel when he can easily buy one for a few dollars <laughs> another one from him the first time I sang in church in a church choir 200 people changed their religion <laughs> and George Bernard Shaw or Bernard Shaw Patriotism is your conviction that this country is superior to all others because you were born in it. Yeah, it's not, that's just that's a truism, isn't it? It's not a joke. Um, George Bernard Shaw again. We learn from experience that men never learn anything from experience. <laughs> George Burns. Oh, George Burns. Happiness is having a large, loving, caring, close-knit family in another city. <laughs> it's another one from George. If you live to be 100, you've got it made. Very few people die past that age. <laughs> If you live to be well, if you live to be one hundred, you've got it made because very few people past that age die. Oh. People, oh dear! You know you're getting old when you stoop to tie your shoelaces and wonder what else you could do while you're down there. <laughs> Have a 
have you ever noticed that anybody driving slower than you is an idiot and anyone going faster than you is a maniac again George that's George Carlin another one from George Carlin I was thinking about how many people seem to read the Bible a whole lot more, a whole lot more when they get older. Then it dawned on me, they're cramming for the final exam. <laughs> and George kind of says, I'm in shape, round as a shape. If you try to fail and succeed, which have you done? George Carlin. I feel like I'm going to do an impression of George Carlin, but I won't. Let me, no, I can't. I can, but I need to speak louder. May the forces of evil become confused on the way to your house. <laughs> Another one from George Carlin. Most people work just hard enough not to get fired and get paid just enough money not to quit. This is George W. Bush. To those of you who received honours, awards and distinctions, I say well done. And to the C students, I say to you too. I say to you, I say to you too, can be President of the United States. Mm. Whoever said money can't buy happiness didn't know where to shop. That's Gertrude Stein. Groucho Marx, a black cat crossing your path signifies that the animal is going somewhere. Another one by Groucho, behind every successful man is a woman. Behind her is his wife. <laughs> dear, oh dear. Groucho. Groucho, here's to our wives and girlfriends. May they never meet. <laughs> uh, number one from Groucho. Marx, I refuse to join any club that would have me as a member. So I thought that was Woody Allen. But there you go. I was married by a judge. I should have asked for a jury. Groucho. Number one from him. If you find it hard to laugh at yourself, I would be happy to do it for you. And I think the last one is from Groucho Marx again. Uh, marriage is the chief cause of divorce. <laughs> I'll leave it. <laughs> read this one I'm going to leave you with Harry Hill get ready it's only when you look at an ant through a magnifying glass on a sunny day that you realise how often they burst into flames I thought I'd just do a bit of a um, <laughs> uh, yeah that was it that's pretty kind of all I'm doing today just thought I'd just read out some funny stuff Henry Youngman this is from Henry Youngman if you're going to do something tonight that you'll be sorry for tomorrow morning sleep late Oh, this is one. Hillary Clinton. Blah. Hillary Clinton said this. If I want to knock a story off the front page, I just change my hairstyle. How cool is that? Probably true as well. So I'm going to go. I'm going to say thank you for listening. Hope I bored you to a nice restful state of relaxation and calmness and 
I shall speak to you probably again tomorrow. If you like what I do, leave a review. If you like what I do, leave a review. Wow, wow, wow. Remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy. Lots of love. Bye.